Hello everyone, in this lecture today I am going to talk to you about Southern blotting. Southern blotting is a biochemical method, the protocol for which was first developed by Edward Southern. Hence, uh, this method is called uh, Southern blotting after Edward Southern. So, this Southern blotting method is used for the detection of the DNA. Uh, which, which reveals information about DNA identity, size, and evidence. The, the process of Southern blotting, it involves six different steps. Step number one, DNA digestion. Step number two, gel electrophoresis. Step number three, blotting. Step number four, pro probe labeling. Step number five, hybridization and washing. Step number six, detection. I will discuss in details about all these steps. Uh, so DNA digestion. The first step is the DNA digestion. So in this step, what we do, we digest genomic DNA. So we digest genomic DNA with the, uh, in, uh, with, uh, at, at the intended restriction enzyme sites using suitable restriction enzymes. We, okay, I'm, I'm going to explain uh, this process of southern blotting using uh, two examples that is delta ADRNAs1 Cree knockout and delta ADRNAs2 RN Cree knockout. So these are the two examples that I will be using. So uh, here in this case, so for this knockout, the genomic DNA was digested using BGL second. Okay, so BGL second, this BGL second cuts up uh, upstream of five prime targeting sequences here. And downstream of three prime targeting sequences, TGS referring to targeting sequences here. So resulting in one um, 8.9 KB um, the fragmented DNA. Of course, there will be other fragments because this is the genomic DNA that we are digesting. So we will get multiple fragments, but one of the fragments that we will get will be 8.9 uh, 61 um, base kilo bases when we use this BGL2 uh, BGL restriction enzyme to di digest the genomic DNA from this uh, knockout. Uh, whereas uh, another example is the delta ADRNAs2 Cree in which the, 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 the genomic DNA from which we digested using XSO1. Uh, this XSO1 is cutting at, um, cutting here, uh, here, and here, basically, at three different locations, and resulting in 3.5 and 4.6 kb uh, the bands. Okay, so this will cut. So when we do the detection, we will observe these two bands. Okay, because uh, we will synthesize probes specific specific for these targeting sequences that I will describe later. Okay, so for now. What you have to understand is that we have to select the suitable restriction enzyme and this restriction enzyme, uh, we, we select a restriction enzyme in a way that they cut at our intended site because our intended site is here and here and for this knockout which is eight, which, which will result in 8.9 kilobases fragment whereas the intended site for uh, delta ADRNS2 knockout is here, here and here which will result in two um, frag to two bands uh, of 3.5 and 4.6 kilobases respectively. Okay, so after DNA digestion, what we do, the next step is that we, we, we run these fragmented DNA in the gel. Okay, so we run in the gel and then in the gel we will see multiple, multiple fragments, multiple, multiple fragments of uh, these uh, fragmented DNA because uh, our the restriction enzymes that we use, they will not only cut at one location, but they will cut at multiple locations in the genomic DNA. Okay, then what we do? Afterwards, we transfer, we transfer uh, this DNA from the gel to the membrane. Here, in this case, is the nylon membrane. So, that process is called blotting. So, basically, the DNA, fragmented DNA from the gel will be transferred uh, to the nylon membrane. So in these fragmented DNA, of course, if this is, let's say, that delta ADRNAs1 and if this is delta ADRNAs2 Cree, uh, so for this case, uh, so sorry, let's, yeah, okay, let me make it here, uh, 2 Cree, so then this is our intended band, in, the intended fragment uh, for delta ADRNAs1, 
because this is what we want to fish out using the probes and uh, for delta ADRNS2 these two okay will be our intended uh, fragments um, um fragments that we we want to uh, see in the when we when we do the detection okay so the, I, I will explain to you um in details in 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 details in the later slides okay so uh, so in the step what we did we simply ran this uh, digested dna on on the gel and then from the gel we transfer these fragmented dna onto the nylon membrane so this is a uh, gel electrophoresis and blotting and the next step is probe labeling so a uh, probe is really really important in in southern blotting process uh, so what is a probe actually so a nucleic acid probe it is a nucleic acid probe uh, this nucleic acid probe has sequence which are homologous to the target sequence under study and this probe uh, can be labeled with radioactivity fluorescent dye or enzyme that can generate chemiluminescent signal when incubated with appropriate substrate so uh, so then and so what is it actually so what is a probe so the probe is that we synthesize our probe okay for let's say that for this delta adrns1 cre knockout so we have a probe <coughs> that has sequence which are homologous to this five prime targeting sequence and three prime targeting sequence okay whereas for delta adrns2 we have a probe that that ha that that has uh, the sequence which are homologous to five prime tgs targeting sequence and three prime targeting sequence of this delta adrns2 knockout okay so then our probe will have homologous sequences for these uh, targeting sequences so then uh, then after we synthesize the probe then we label this probe in our case we labeled this with the digoxyzenin um, using dig probe pcr synthesis kit okay so label labeling of the probe because we want to visualize it later in the detection stage that's why labeling is important labeling can be of different type as i as i as described earlier radioactive fluorescent or enzymatic so then after this after probe labeling then what we need what we have we are we do is we do the hybridization so for the hybridization what we do uh, we we take the membrane right we take the membrane and this membrane we incubate with our probes okay we incubate with our probes and our probes will specifically bind okay our probes will specifically bind this is a1 and this is a2 this is for delta adrns1 this is for delta adrns2 they will specifically bind to this uh, for delta ADRNS1 to this uh, this fragment of the DNA corresponding to 8.9 uh, kilobases size. For the delta ADRNS2, our probes will specifically bind to these these two uh, these two fragments of 3.5 and 4.6 kilobases respectively. So so then they they will not bind to other fragments okay because after dna digestion we will get multiple fragments but they will not bind to other fragments they will only specifically bind to these fragments and after this uh, so after the hybridization uh, of course on labeled probe we will do washing and on labeled probe uh, probes will be washed out okay and in the next step what we do then in the next step we do the detection uh, of course using a suitable method based on uh, based on the the kind of probe labeling we did so radio label probes they may be detected by x-ray film or phospho um, imaging instrument or probes can also be detected enzymatically enzymatically labeled probes can be detected by incubating with chemiluminescent substrate and exposing the blot to the x-ray film so guys now look at these western blot pictures here i have compared them with wild type and the knockout as you can see for the wild type this is the band that we expected this is the band that we accepted but wild type is not our concern our concern is the uh, the knockout in the knockout delta adrns1 we expected around 8.9 uh, kb and here we got the band 8.9 kb because our probe specifically bound uh, get bound to this 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 fragment of the dna that's why we saw uh, when, when this band when we did the detection uh, for the delta ADRNS2 Cree, uh, we we were we 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 expected two bands because our probe should bind to two different fragments. Uh, so this is fragment one and this is fragment two, as you can see, and this is what we expected because our probe specifically bound to these two these two uh, different fragments of the DNA. 
okay so um, the southern blood hybridization in molecular biology is used uh, to to detect if uh, there is one application is that if there is off locus integration or not okay off locus integration okay off locus integration or not as you can see here in this knockout we got the band as we expected therefore there is no off locus integration and here also we got the band what we expected therefore there is not off locus integration of the plasmid dna in fact there is um, in uh, in locus integration of the plasmid dna i hope guys this video was helpful in understanding uh, the southern blotting process please subscribe our channel and also support us on paypal like and share the video Thank you very much.